Right now, we're all on edge because of the coronavirus. And yes, it is scary, but you know what helps me sleep at night? Is remembering that there are a million other things that could kill me first. <laughs> yeah, there's car accidents or fires or that suicide pact I made with my best friend in high school if we weren't <laughs> married by now. <laughs> but luckily, luckily, the U.S. government recently took action to cross one potential killer off the list. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency is targeting PFAS chemicals in its new proposal for a national drinking water standard. PFAS are toxic chemicals linked to serious diseases like, oh, cancer, liver damage, and thyroid disease. And guess what? They never, ever, ever degrade. In fact, they're known as forever chemicals. They're so prevalent, CDC scientists believe PFAS chemicals are in the bloodstreams of nearly all Americans. Yeah, apparently there's a group of chemicals called PFAS <laughs> that are in all of our blood, and it might cause cancer. And because they're impossible to break down, they're known as forever chemicals, which sounds really dangerous, but also kind of romantic. <laughs> yeah, it does. It sounds like something from an old-school R&B song. You know, it's just like, girl, I want to be your forever chemical. <laughs> There's nothing toxic about our love. <laughs> but what are these forever chemicals? And how did they get into us? Because if it's not sexually transmitted, I don't know how I got it. <laughs> well, let's find out in another installment of If You Don't Know, Now You Know. <laughs> now, forever chemicals might be with us until the end of time, but... They were only engineered by scientists about 80 years ago. And for a while, it seemed like they would only change the world for the better. PFAS chemicals were first discovered in 1938, accidentally by scientists. They were used a few years later in the Manhattan Project. What make PFAS so useful in manufacturing is how the chemicals fit together. The fluorine atoms just so happen to fit perfectly around the carbon atoms to create a bond that resists things like heat, oil, and water. It's in most products that are water, heat, and grease resistant. They're used to repel water, grease, and oil in all sorts of things, from carpets to clothing to nonstick cookware that's right. Forever chemicals are used to keep things like food, oil, and moisture from sticking to surfaces, which you can't deny is really useful. I mean, like, I don't want to get cancer. But at the same time, have you ever tried scraping eggs off a non... <laughs> like, like a sticky pan? Have you tried that? It's a nightmare. Like, there have definitely been times when I was just like, oh, I'd rather be dead! <laughs> and this technology, this technology was discovered by scientists in entirely by accident, which always amazes me that they can do this. Like, scientists are always making one thing, but then they discover something totally different. You know, I mean, like, I've done the same thing in my life. Like, one time I was trying to create dinner for my girlfriend, but instead I discovered that she didn't love me. <laughs> I, I guess, in a way, me and Stacy were also nonstick. <laughs> but the point is, the point is, these forever chemicals have tons of uses. Uh, they were even used in the Manhattan Project to help build the first atomic bomb, which means... At some point in the 1940s, a general was like, did you discover a way to defeat the Germans? And the scientists were like, uh, we're still working on it. Uh, but, but before I get to that, has this ever happened to you? <laughs> now, Forever Chemicals would be incredible if they remained in all those products like they were supposed to. Unfortunately, they just can't seem to stay put. So once they're made, they just accumulate in the environment, they end up in our water supply, they end up in our food, and they end up in us. The environmental watchdog group found forever chemicals, or PFAs, in drinking water in some 31 states. You'll find them in the lining of typical takeout containers and pizza boxes. But the toxins in the packaging can transfer into food. The Food and Drug Administration just found substantial levels in some grocery store meats and seafood. And they found even higher levels in chocolate cake that can be bought off the shelf. Damn, chocolate cake takes no prisoners. <laughs> if it doesn't get you with the diabetes, it's got a backup plan to take you down with secret chemicals. <laughs> yeah, it's like if Walter White teamed up with Betty Crocker. <laughs> and why does this always happen with food we love, huh? It's always the food we love that's coming to kill us. You never hear the news say, this just in, fermented horse meat is bad for you. <laughs> It's always like, do you enjoy chocolate cake and water? Well, you dead now. <laughs> because chocolate cake would have been bad enough, but forever chemicals are also in our water. Our water, people! That means it's in the sink, it's in the shower, which means it's seen me naked. 
so it could give me cancer and blackmail me? I swear to God, Forever Chemicals, you tell anyone about that thing hanging off my back and I'll kill you. <laughs> so anyway, thanks to Forever Chemicals, everything from your food to your drinking water is contaminated. And yes, the EPA is finally starting to take action now, but people have been raising concerns about these Forever Chemicals for decades. And for decades, companies like DuPont were brushing off those concerns like they were food on a Teflon pan. Even DuPont says it cannot rule out that Teflon-connected products, such as its Stain Master carpet treatment, give off the chemical. Uma Chowdhury, a vice president of research, is the DuPont executive chosen to publicly defend Teflon. She says Teflon is completely safe, even if the key chemical is in everyone's blood. Everyone has it. Everyone has it. It's in my blood? Your blood? Possibly. We do not believe there are any adverse health effects. Is it a good thing use? to have it in your blood? There are lots of chemicals that are present in our blood. There are lots of chemicals in our blood? Yeah, but right now, we're talking about the chemicals your company put there. What kind of defense is this? Can you imagine if you caught someone breaking into your home and you're like, hey, what are you doing here? They're like, uh, there are many people in houses right now. <laughs> I mean, who's that guy? You're like, that's my husband, my point exactly. So at this point, at this point, no matter what the government does to fight forever chemicals, there's a good chance a lot of the damage is already done. If you've got blood, these forever chemicals are in it. So all companies like DuPont can do now is just put their best spin on things, which isn't easy. Well, I won't lie, if I ran DuPont, I would, I would try. I'd try and, like, figure out a way to make it look good. You know, I wouldn't hide the fact that they may have poisoned almost every human on the face of the planet. No, I... I would make ads to own it with pride. What do banks, real estate, and the Oscars have in common? Discrimination. But at DuPont, we're all about inclusivity. That's right, no matter who you are or where you're from, DuPont will poison you. I grew up in Texas, and I've got DuPont chemicals in my blood. Look at me. I am from Uganda, and I am poisoned. Because of all these chemicals in my blood, the doctors say, I've got cancer. And so does my husband. <laughs> DuPont, forever chemicals for everyone. <laughs>